So Toyota has finally announced the 2025 4Runner. Yes, the new generation. That's why I got my uh, TRD mug ready for uh, this video. And yeah, my name is Elias and I'm with RevMatch Media. So let's get started. Now, with this, we are kind of limited with the information we have from Toyota right now. So some of this stuff may change. We're going to talk about some of the exterior changes, some of the interior changes, a new trim. Yes, we have a new trim for the 4Runner, as well as the, yes, drivetrain changes that everyone has been maybe not waiting for. So let's take a look at some of those things. First, let's talk exterior. We have essentially what's going to shape the new 4Runner is going to be the TNGA-F architecture. So we've seen it in the other off-roaders that Toyota has basically come out with, with the new generations. We still have body on frame. Yes, so internet, don't get too, too worried about it. We still have a body on frame uh, SUV with the 4Runner. Then we get some kind of boxier fenders yeah like we have they, they get a little bit meatier uh meaner sculpted so no longer do we have kind of these softer edges that we were seeing with the previous generation tacoma sequoia uh you know tundra so we now have these boxier dimensions or these more jagged dimensions with the forerunner which i like i definitely love that it definitely gives it a more you know, beefier, mean uh, looking fender. Okay, now let's talk about dimensions a little bit. So the wheelbase, we do have 2.4 inches longer. So the wheelbase is gonna be a little bit longer, but the overall length to the 4Runner does increase by 4.7 inches. Yeah, that's kind of a good amount of size bigger. Uh, so yeah, we have that. Unfortunately though, stuff is gonna suffer. Yes, approach angle does suffer from 32 degrees to 33 degree approach angle. And then departure angle goes from 24 to 26. Yeah, not too bad. I don't think it's too bad of a, of a, of a jump or a difference between the previous one. So far, what I'm seeing from the press release photos, we are kind of looking at three different designs for the uh, 4Runner. We kind of have that limited look where we have uh, a little bit of a lower air dam to help with aerodynamics for towing for just highway driving that kind of stuff and it does have a kind of a lower uh silver or gray looking uh like lower front bumper area which i have a feeling that's going to be interchanged <laughs> between different styles then we get the trd pro yes yeah, so trd pro gets rid of that yeah because we need all the front clearance we we can uh we do get the uh oh yeah the other thing is we do get the rectangular fog lights so we get them uh across the different trims uh as well i like them uh they worked well in the tacoma i like the way that they looked uh so yeah excited to see what maybe the aftermarket has for that but we do have the trd uh, front that looks a little bit like I said it's a little bit higher based on the fact that we no longer have that air dam it is kind of that lower black trim at the bottom and then we get the uh we get the trail hunter yes mm, yeah I kind of let the cat out of the bag with this one but yeah the trail hunter is going to have the same basically design as the uh, TRD Pro but the lower bumper is going to be silver or that kind of gray aluminum look to it um, I don't know if I like the Trail Hunter over maybe the TRD Pro. I like black. I like black accents. Um, I don't know. They just kind of make your color pop for whatever you choose the, the Forerunner to be. So, yeah, that's just kind of my thing. Now, let's hop inside. And, yes, it looks like you're in a Tacoma because it's virtually the identical design to the Tacoma's dashboard one thing though that i am kind of seeing based on the picture is the glove box that appears to be a little bit different maybe a little bit smaller because the tacoma one kind of comes down a little bit more and this one is just kind of a rectangle area uh, again it depends based on the angle that we have of the photo uh from toyota so that's yeah i don't know uh i don't know why that would be done maybe help out with uh knee clearance there but 
yeah, it looks like you might be getting a smaller um, glove box there. Now, the other thing, back seat leg room. Yeah, that's looking a little tight based on the press photo that we have where it's not really looking much better than it did in the Tacoma. And the Tacoma was kind of on the tight side of that. So just kind of worry about that because the other one was fine. I had no issues with it. We've reviewed a couple of them and it was no issues with the back seat. We still do get a third row option. So very similar to how we have it in the in the previous generation now <laughs> with the limited that gives you the option for the third row. We still have it with the new generation. So nice to see how effective it is though. It's probably gonna be small kids back there that are gonna wanna be sitting there. Uh, no big sized adults back there. And then the other thing is we take a look at the infotainment screen. You do get a eight inch standard screen for your infotainment, as well as the option for a 14 inch display. Now, I did see the larger display in the Tacoma, and I can tell you that thing looks huge. It almost looks a little too big. Uh, I believe this Forerunner is gonna be a little bit wider, should typically be a little bit wider um, than the Tacoma, but yeah, it, it may still be a little on the big side, so just be aware of that. Uh, the good thing though, it is kind of out of sight, so it's not something that's super intrusive and just kind of in your line of sight. Oh my God, thank you. The next thing we get is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Thank you, thank you for these upgraded tech things because they were very needed in some of these vehicles. So wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto is great to have. We also have a wireless charger. So yes, now it, you know the two things you really need when you wanna go wireless, we have that wireless charger as well. And if you wanna plug in, you have USB-C ports across the uh, 4Runner itself. Now, the next thing is the Trail Hunter. Yes, we get a Trail Hunter trim in the new 4Runner. We had it in the Tacoma, now we have it in the 4Runner. Could we see it maybe in the Tundra? That would be kind of cool. But either way, Trail Hunter, who's that for? You like overlanding, you like going off-roading and you know parking somewhere and enjoying the, the scenery, enjoying nature, wherever it is, the Trail Hunter is going to be for you. So it is more geared towards that. Uh, and a couple of things you get with the Trail Hunter, you get ARB's Old Man Emu, uh, 2.5 inch shocks. We also get the ARB roof rack on the top. Wheel and tire setup, we get a 33 inch Toyo Open Country AT tire. And with that, there's a couple of things. We do get added ground clearance with the Trail Hunter over the standard uh, 4Runner. So we get two inch lift in the front and one and a half in the rear. We also get rock rails, so a little bit of protection. Trust me, I've hit a, a few rock rails and I've been so thankful that they've been there to take the hit and not the, not the vehicle itself. We get skid plates. Yeah, I've skidded a few plates myself. So good to see that we have that on the Trail Hunter as well. And speaking about fog lights, we get the 20 inch LED light bar in the front between the fog lights themselves. Now again, this is stuff that yes, you can go aftermarket with, but if you don't wanna go through the trouble of installing things, wiring, you know, suspension lifts and things like that, you just wanna pay for your Forerunner and Take it out, you can, and it's ready for you. The other great thing you get with the Trail Hunter, a 2400 watt inverter to power up things you may need, a refrigerator, um, a stove, electric stove, whatever the case may be, you have the additional power for that. Okay, so here comes what everyone has been waiting for. Let's talk powertrain. Before, let's talk old, old to new, old, we had the 4.0 liter V6 with a five-speed auto. We were cranking out 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, that's kind of low on today's standards as far as 
uh, you know, an off-roader, uh, at least whatever's in the market nowadays. We have these Broncos, you know, Raptors really getting up there in power. Now, let's talk about new engine. For the 2025 Forerunner, we're going to have two engine options. They're pretty much the same, but a little bit different. So for the standard engine, we do get the iForce engine, and it is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It is connected to an eight-speed auto. Then it is cranking out 278 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. Couple of things with that. So we, yes, we drop two cylinders, we gain a turbo. I know this is gonna be a big talk on the internet and uh, you guys can chime in in the comments and let me know what you think about dropping the two cylinders for that turbocharger. But when we're talking about power, we're dealing with more horsepower and more torque. Is that really beneficial? Is that really worth losing the two cylinders for that turbo? Again, guys, let me know. Let me know in the comments. I know you guys will. So that's for the standard engine. So we're already essentially beating the previous engine as far as power goes. Yes, I know we're, we're gonna talk about that R word, reliability. We'll, we'll see in the future how that goes. As far as the next engine we get, the flagship engine, so to speak, we get the hybrid iForce Max engine. And that is a 2.4 cylinder turbocharged engine with a hybrid system in it. And that is also still connected to the H-Speed Auto, but the power goes up. We go up to 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. That's insane. That's insane. And because, again, we have hybrid power system, we have a turbocharged system, the hybrid system is going to really get you off the line, and the turbocharger is going to take over the rest, uh, you know, on higher highway speeds to deliver the power that you may need in the higher RPM range. It's, it's kind of tough to beat that. It's kind of tough to beat that, and I know six-cylinder naturally aspirated, but you get the instant torque of a hybrid and you get the awesome boost of a turbocharger. Yeah. So again, guys, let me know if you're willing to drop those two cylinders for significantly more power. Now, after the engine and transmission, where does that power go? Well, there's different options we have. We have a rear wheel drive configuration. We have a full-time four wheel drive configuration as well as a part-time four-wheel drive configuration. To add to that, you're gonna have a two-speed transfer case in all four-wheel drive models. And on top of that, we're gonna get automatic limited slip differentials across the board with all the configurations, which is nice. Then the Platinum and Limited will get a center locking differential. Yeah, there's a lot of different kind of configurations and options that you have, which is good. Just be aware of which one you're gonna be getting. And a couple of things as well, we are going to get a electronic locking differential when we have the TRD Off-Road, the TRD Pro, or the Trail Hunter trims. So good to see that we're gonna have that option and we can, you know, in tricky situations, simply lock that rear diff and get you out of a lot of trouble. And one of the big new things with Forerunner is the option to disconnect the front stabilizer. So this is gonna be a great thing to just allow more flexing to happen when you are taking these Forerunners out on trails. And when things get a little tricky, just push a button, disconnects, and you're good to go. Now, you also can get the help of the multi-terrain select with traction control helping it out uh, in four high and four low. So nice to see that. We're gonna have options like mud, dirt, and sand. Now, one of the things that makes the Forerunner super attractive to me is the fact that the towing rating actually increased. We went from 5,000 pounds of the previous generation up to 6,000 pounds with this new generation. So. Yeah, it's nice to know that, and maybe I didn't need 5,000, but it's nice to know that this is capable of doing 6,000 
And now I feel a little bit better about towing 4,000 or 4,500 pounds uh, previous to the gen previous generation. That was, again, its limit was 5,000. So good to see that on the 4Runner. So in conclusion, we have more aggressive exterior. We have super upgraded tech. We have the new Trail Hunter trim. And we have this new engine and different configurations for drivetrain. Yeah, I'm super excited. What do you guys think? Let me know. What would I go? I think the Trail Hunter is a little overkill for me, for my use. I like the TRD Pro stuff. I, I really do. You know, the colors that we're seeing with that TRD Pro, it looks really nice. It's kind of like a sand color. And, you know, the fact that we have the sway bar disconnect, we have all these, uh, you know, options for, for the drive modes. So I'm excited to see drive it and uh, get to experience the forerunner well guys let me know what you think about the new 2025 toyota forerunner and remember find the right gear see ya